Section 24 of Astounding Stories 12, December 1930, by Various. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Reader's Corner Literature Dear Editor, After comparison with various other magazines which specialize in the publication of science fiction, we, the Scientific Fiction Library Association of 1457 First Avenue, New York City, have found that your magazine, Amazing Stories, publishes stories to which the term literature may be applied in its real sense. A fine example of this is the story Murder Madness by Murray Leinster. Others of the finer novels are The Beetle Horde by Victor Rousseau and, up to the present installment, Earth the Marauder by Arthur J. Burks. Brigands of the Moon by Ray Cummings was interesting and well written, but it was not literature, not a story which you will remember and read over again. Of the shorter stories, the novelettes, the best are Spawn of the Stars by Charles W. Diffin, Monsters of Moyen by Arthur J. Burks, and The Atom Smasher by Victor Rousseau. Since the magazine started, there are only three stories that did not belong in the magazine, and were not even interesting. These are The Corpse on the Grating by Hugh B. Cave, The Stolen Mind by M. Staley, and the last, I wonder that the editors who used such good sense in picking the other finer stories let it pass, Vampires of Venus, by Anthony Pelcher. May you keep up the high standard of fiction you are publishing at present. Nathan Greenfeld, 873 Whitlock Avenue, New York City. You see, it didn't. Dear Editor, Firstly, let me say that I am sending a year's subscription to Astounding Stories which will tell you that they are good. On the average, the stories are of good literary merit and plot. However, there is one thing that seems to be getting rather pushed into the background, and that is the second part of your title, Super Science. If this is to be a science fiction magazine, let us have it so. I am kicking against stories like Murder Madness and the like. They are really excellent in every way, but just need that tincture of a little scientific background to make them super excellent. Brigands of the Moon and the Moon Master seem to me more the type of story our mag should publish from its name. No doubt this criticism will leave you cold and this effusion find its way into the nearest waste paper basket, but I find that a number of your readers in Australia think somewhat the same as I do. More brickbats, I hope not, and more bouquets, I hope so. The next time I write, N. W. Alcock, 5 Gaza Road, Narrenburn, N. S. W., Australia. Not in de head. Dear Editor, I shall be glad to take advantage of your cordial invitation to come over to the Reader's Corner. In the first place, I find your magazine the best of its kind on the market, and you are to be congratulated on having such excellent authors as Ray Cummings, Murray Leinster, and Captain S. P. Meek. Nevertheless, there are so many things to be criticized that I hardly know where to begin. Let's start off with stories of future warfare. Although this class is potentially one of the most interesting, it is at the same time one of the most abused. Ray Cummings can write classics in this field, but the efforts of most of the others are atrocities. I'll wager that their favorite childhood sport was mowing down whole regiments of lead soldiers with oxyacetylene torches. It shows in their writings. Why can't they think of something original? Why can't they make their stories logical? The merits of a story are not dependent on the number of people wiped out by one blast of a death ray. But they all stick to the same old plot. A merciless but well-meaning scientist or hordes from a foreign planet wipe out thousands of American citizens at one blow. Hundreds of airplanes are disintegrated before they discover that the enemy is invulnerable. An ultimatum in domineering tones gives the terror-stricken populace forty-eight hours in which to surrender. But all unknown to the dastardly villains, an obscure young scientist labors to save his country and the girl he loves. Fifteen minutes before the time set in the ultimatum, he perfects a new weapon that soon sends the invaders to their well-merited fate. Surely you realize how ridiculous the whole affair is. It is only slightly less nauseating than the plot used in the stories of advanced civilizations, where the hero is conducted on a sightseeing tour by the individual in whose path he popped upon entering this new world. I can't believe that more than a handful of my fellow beings are of such low intelligence that they can find enjoyment in such trash. You will notice that although every reader has a different list of favorite authors, Ray Cummings has his name in practically every list. He is easily your favorite author, 
Ray Cummings does not wipe out whole cities at one time. His heroes do not save the world by inventing a new weapon at a moment's notice. His wars are not of forty-eight hours' duration. His conquerors do not attempt to win the war by one great attack on New York City. Do try to have your authors write logical stories. I would now like to criticize the love element in your stories. I do not claim that there should be none whatever from cover to cover of your magazine, but I do claim that there should be none unless it really helps the plot. Most of your authors seem to think that a girl is necessary in every plot, and so they bring her in, disregarding the fact that they do not know how to handle such material. The way it stands now, the heroine is introduced in a lame, routine fashion, is rescued once or twice, and accepts the hero as a husband in an altogether lame fashion. There are many other points, but they can wait. Logical war stories, no utopias or sightseeing tours, sensible love element, plus your present policy will make a corking magazine. Philip Waite, 3400 Wayne Avenue, New York, New York. No present plans. Dear Editor, Thanks for the new color cover. It certainly is a big improvement. The picture on the front of our magazine was just as astounding as the story by R. F. Starzl from which it was drawn. Let's have more stories from the pen of Mr. Starzl. In my opinion, Beyond the Heaviside Layer is the best story I have read in Astounding Stories to date. I am very pleased that you intend to print a sequel to it. Now I would like to ask you a question. Do you intend to print an annual or quarterly, or do you think you will ever enlarge the size of this magazine? I don't care so much whether you enlarge the magazine or not, but I certainly would like to read an annual or quarterly. Even though this letter meets the fate of thousands of other such letters and sees the inside of your wastebasket, I will at least have had the pleasure of writing you and wishing our magazine success to the nth degree. Forrest J. Ackerman 236 and a half, New Hampshire, Los Angeles, California. Excellent to so-so. Dear Editor, I notice a large number of subscribers are giving their opinions of astounding stories. I hate to be with the crowd, but I have to side with the majority in this case and say it's just about right. My favorite writers are R. F. Starzl, that planet of dread was a peach, Charles W. Diffin, A. Merritt, Ralph Milne Farley, Murray Leinster, and Ray Cummings. Now as to the August issue, here is how I rate them. Planet of Dread, more than twenty cents worth at the first crack, a real story. Lord of Space, excellent. I meant to include Victor Rousseau in my list of favorites above. The Second Satellite, so-so. Silver Dome, so. Earth the Marauder, too deep for me, and that barrel stuff is sheer bunk. Murder Madness. A real story. Get more like this. The Flying City. Too much explanation and description and not enough action. Perhaps it looks like I'm sort of critical after all, but I didn't mean it just that way. What I'm driving at is that Astounding Stories is by far superior to its competitors, and I'm telling you so because it might make you feel better to know it. If you want to print this testimonial, go to it. To tell the truth, I'll be looking for it. Leslie P. Mann, 1227 Ogden Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. Too Many Serials Dear Editor, I have just finished the August issue, and I would like to tell you my opinion of it and the magazine as a whole. The stories in order of merit were 1. The Second Satellite 2. The Flying City 3. Silver Dome 4. The Lord of Space 5. The Planet of Dread I won't pass judgment upon the serials, as I have not read all the parts. In The Flying City there are a number of points I am hazy about. How could Kor speak English? However, this could be cleared up by saying that Kor sent out men to get the language, etc. As a whole, Astounding Stories is a good magazine. There are too many serials, however, but since other readers like them I won't complain. You have a fine array of science fiction authors. With such writers as Vincent, Meek, Hamilton, Starzl, and Ernst, your magazine can't be anything but a success. The September layouts look good to me. I hope it is. E. Anderson, 1765 Southern Boulevard, New York, New York. Thanks, Mr. Glasser. Dear Editor, 
Somewhat belatedly, I am writing to commend you most heartily on the August issue of Astounding Stories, which I consider by far the finest number since the inception of the magazine last January. The authors whose work appeared in this issue are among the greatest modern writers of fantasy and scientific fiction. Leinster, Burks, Hamilton, Rousseau, what a brilliant galaxy, and Starzl, Vincent, Rich, all writers of note. If ever a magazine merited the designation All-Star Number, your August issue filled the bill. However, I am confident that even this superb achievement will be surpassed by some future edition of Astounding Stories, for each succeeding number to date has improved on the one before, and with a new Cummings novel in the offing, it seems the August issue, despite its excellence, will speedily be eclipsed. Alan Glasser, 1510 University Avenue, New York, New York. Are our covers too gaudy? Dear Editor, this is the first time that I have ventured to air my views to any magazine, but as yours interests me greatly, I hereby shed my reticence. I believe of all magazines of your type you have come nearest perfection, but there are just a few things that bother me, and no doubt others like me. In the first place, must you make your covers as lurid and as contradictory to good design as they are? Really, I blush when my news-dealer hands me the gaudy thing. People interested in science do not usually succumb to circus poster advertising. Then there are the stories. I realize that you must cater to all tastes, but some of them are very childish, slightly camouflaged fairy tales. Science fiction can be written very convincingly, as is testified by the stories of H. G. Wells, Ray Cummings, Jules Verne, and others. These writers attain their effects by the proper use of the English language without silly and obviously tacked-on romance, the use of known scientific facts elaborated sensibly, and by not trying to make a novel out of a short story. The stimulation of the imagination from science fiction is most enjoyable, and I shall continue to read your magazine, even though my fault-finding is not considered, for, as I said before, you certainly have come nearer my ideal than any of the others. Hector D. Spear, 867 West 181st Street, the Tri Sigma Fraternity, New York City. Now, sir, our astronomy is okay. Dear Editor, I am taking advantage of your invitation to write to you. Since Astounding Stories is available, you have given me a lot of pleasure, and I hope you may get a little pleasure out of reading this. First, I want to say that you're hitting the ball as far as I'm concerned. I could hardly suggest an improvement. In the August issue, I liked Planet of Dread by R. F. Starzl best. When that thing in the pipe grabbed me, I mean Gunga, wow, and it gave me a lot of satisfaction to see the Master in Murder Madness by Murray Leinster get it in the neck. Lord of Space was good, too. In fact, all the stories were good. I have only read two or three I really did not like since you started. Say, I never heard of a planet named Inra. Don't you think your author ought to brush up on his astronomy? I also noticed some other authors are a little weak on astronomy. Not that I'm complaining. The stories are okay with me. Harry Johnson, 237 East 128th Street, New York City. Mr. Yetter checks up on us. Dear Editor, As I am a constant reader of astounding stories, I wish to say that though S. P. Meek is one of my favorite authors, his story, Cold Light, was a little wrong when he called the Silver Range by the name of Stillwater Range. I also think it would have been better if he had had a car take Dr. Bird and Carnes out to the hills, because even in Fallon a burrow is a strange sight. But Meek, Cummings, Burks, and all the rest of our famous authors' stories should be in the magazine often. If Verrill, Wells, Nathanson, and Hamilton would also write, the magazine would be perfect. I like all the stories, though some seem to be copies and others lack science. Here is for a long life for astounding stories. Frank Yatter, 369 Railroad Avenue, Fallon, Nevada. Charm all its own. Dear Editor, Let me congratulate you. I have just read The Planet of Dread by R. F. Starzl in your August issue of Astounding Stories. Real science, you know, is pretty rigidly limited, but super science of the kind you seem to run has a freshness and charm all its own. I came upon your magazine quite by accident, and from now on, no doubt will look for it as I stand before the racks of magazines, trying to decide upon something to read. Anton J. Sartori, 
1330 West 6th Street, Los Angeles, California. INRA COULD EXIST. Dear Editor, You will have to excuse this old telegraph office typewriter. It is all I have to express my appreciation to you for the tremendously interesting magazine you put out. I have only read the last three issues, but those are enough to convince me that Astounding Stories fills a long-felt want. I read all the others, too, but from now on I'm going to look over their offerings at the stand before I buy. They have to go some to come up to the standard set by you, especially in the August copy. That story, The Planet of Dread, was the most weird, exciting, thrilling, satisfying, in short the most astounding story I have ever read. Nothing has seemed so real since I first read Wells' stories. I liked the characters. Poor Gunga! I could just see him trying to sacrifice the man he obviously worshipped to stop that horrible noise. The picture of Gunga on the cover was just exactly what I would expect the Martian to look like. You have a good artist. I liked Mark Forepaw, too. He didn't lose his nerve for one minute. Not Mark. Who says civilization is going down when the future holds men like that? Next to the Planet of Dread I liked the Lord of Space. That, that was a vivid and well-drawn story, too. Those two, I think, were the outstanding stories for August. But I must not forget Murder Madness, the serial. It was thrilling and convincing. That's the only kick I have. So many stories sound thin. I don't believe them when I read them. I also want to mention The Forgotten Planet and From an Amber Block. Good, exciting, and you can believe them without too much strain. Oh, by the way, the author of The Planet of Dread made a mistake when he chose a mythical planet for his terrific adventures. Why not Venus or Mercury? If they have water, the conditions on them would be similar to what he described for Inra. There ain't no such planet. But why expect perfection? I'm satisfied. I wish you success. That's a late wish. You're a success already. Tom P. Fitzgerald, Newcastle, Nebraska. Thus ended the quest. Dear Editor, This is my first letter to your magazine, and right away I'm asking for a pair of sequels. One of these is to The Moon Master by Charles W. Diffin. These sad endings depress me greatly, but if I looked at the ending first, to see whether or not it was sad, it would ruin the story. And besides, sad endings usually have good stories in front of them. The other sequel I want is to From the Ocean's Depths by Sewell P. Wright and its sequel, Into the Ocean's Depths. In looking over my back copies of the magazine, I find that I have not disliked a single story. Thus endeth my quest for a brickbat. Are you going to put out a quarterly? Both the other science fiction magazines that I get do so, and I observe that it gives opportunity for a story of full novel length all in one piece. Not that I object to serials but I like once in a while to sit down to a long story without having to dig out three or four magazines. However, please continue the long serials, for what is life without the element of suspense? Hugh M. Gilmore, 920 North Vista Street, Hollywood, California. End of the Reader's Corner And End of Astounding Stories 12, December 1930